I'm Darren Gonaccio. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Crown Peak. I'm Paul Taylor, uh, VP of Solution Engineering. So Crown Peak has been around for almost 20 years, and we are one of the only CMS vendors that started and was born in the SaaS world. What does that mean? The ability to actually manage all of your web experiences, privacy experiences, and really the quality of those experiences, all without ever having to do with upgrading your life. So back in 2001, uh, we realized that marketing teams and, and IT teams didn't want to own all this hardware. We thought that by making this simple, that anyone can do this and really build and deploy these solutions, we can actually accelerate how quickly people get to market. And, and over the years, we have been working with some of the biggest brands on the planet to really allow them to do that. And I think, again, with this uncertainty around where the market's going, especially when you introduce the Internet of Things, having something that just allows you to deliver dynamic content into those experiences, regardless of the channel, is giving development teams and ultimately marketers the flexibility they need to embrace this challenge. We can't, as marketers, just choose to deliver a digital experience via web or via mobile. We really have to consider how is a customer or a consumer going to use this content and what channel does it make most sense to them. But either way, I'm communicating with that single brand. And you need to be able to deliver content in a headless way in order to surface the same content from one platform into all of those different experiences in a consistent manner, which as a consumer makes me loyal to that brand even more. I was asking earlier about why we got here and this idea that you know maybe this was a part of the frustration that developers had with some of their legacy systems. So how is this whole headless movement helping that? I mean, how is it helping developers? I think it's giving them the flexibility back. You used to have um, platforms that were quite structured and quite rigid, and when you were trying to deliver content across those, um, it wasn't giving the developers the flexibility that they needed. So I think the movement of delivering content in a headless way gives that flexibility back to the developer. They're now free to choose how they want their content to be presented and by which channel they then want to be able to deliver that. All right, that sounds good. Is there a downside to that? Are we giving up anything? The downside, of course, is when everything is delivered headlessly, everything becomes a software development lifecycle task. So while changing the content is very, very simple, because content's now being delivered by API, if I want to change the presentation or insert a banner where a banner wasn't before, or maybe have a drop down appear in front of my experience, and that has to get in the queue behind every other piece of development that that development team is building and testing. And of course, the marketers can't wait for that to be finished. They have to react multiple times a day to, to changing market conditions. And so this backlog gets longer and longer and longer, which ultimately impacts on their ability to communicate with their customers. Right, so what, what, what are our options? Like how, do we, how do we find this balance between what, you know, what the developer needs and, and what the marketer needs? I mean, there has to be a middle ground here, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. I think you, you take the best of both worlds. You take the best of the platforms when they used to deliver static content and then take all of the best of breed stuff you have around headless where you're now delivering content dynamically. And in that middle ground lives the ideal solution that is going to keep that marketer agile. So could you consider that maybe even headless 2.0? Is that where we're evolving? I think so, yeah. I think we've, uh, we have many platforms now delivering headless and answering the, the problem space for the developer. Uh, I don't think any are correctly addressing uh, the marketer's need right now, and certainly not doing that without creating more challenges for the developer. And so I think that's a, that's a great way to position it. All right, so let's say that Headless 2.0, if we were to define, you'd say that the developers could still build things using the frameworks they love, but marketers would regain their ability to actually you know, structure some UI elements, maybe within some boundaries. Uh, they'd be able to preview those con their content. They'd be able to even edit their content in the, in the context of, of how it's ultimately going to be delivered. Sort of. uh, but not necessarily interfering with how a developer would work. Exactly right. I think you right now in, in the world of headless, you know, one zero, um, you have content authors who can manage the text that appears in a certain set of data, and you have the developers who manage the presentation and the business logic. And I think there's a, there's a way to split that up differently in a headless two point zero approach where both sets of the organisation win. You now have the developers who are able to create how the presentation looks and how the logic fires. But then you don't only give the content itself back to the marketer, you then give the use and reuse of that again. So now the marketers have the ability to perhaps drag on content blocks into a page and then consume the content that they want and move those around inside the experience. But the developers still maintain actually what happens inside that component and ultimately that page-based experience.
a couple other things I think we can take from the, the, the CMS playbook too that needs to be brought to the headless world are things like multi-language. Uh, the idea that you're going to have these experiences in many languages across many cultures and actually the idea that I want this content to be the same content that propagates across many places. The idea of content relationships and that this thing's connected to that thing. So that as a, again, a marketer, I can manifest those things. And then when I change it once, it ripples across many places. I think so, yeah. And the, you know, as experiences are being managed across more diverse cultures and, and localizations around the world and, and countries, you have to be able to deliver that content in a way that is optimized again to those users, not just translation, but localization as well, and how you communicate to different markets um, in a way that is you know, sales-centric, which is ultimately what, what a marketer is trying to do. Um, having the platform that enables you to create those relationships between those content fragments, um, while still delivering that headless content behind where, where, the, where it matters, uh, does give you an advantage as a marketer. And I think if you if you look at what the future holds in a headless 2.0 world, rather than working on how to shift content around a page, they're now just focusing purely on what other capabilities does my organization need that is totally reusable to then help extend their message. We've also talked about customer experience. Part of customer experience is this idea of optimizing, testing, learning, personalization. You know, how does all of that technology fit into this headless world? I think if you look at how we deliver content in a headless 2.0 world, and again, maintaining that flexibility for your authors to deliver content and your developers to deliver functionality, that then gives us a greater ability to consume content from other third-party services. So personalization services, CDP platforms, commerce tools, delivering that content asynchronously um, at the edge uh, via data-driven services that have been configured by the development team means that the marketers are gonna be able to deliver those experiences, more importantly, they're going to be able to preview and uh, have version control in, in all of those, those experiences, but we'll also then to be able to consume that content uh, as well as those experiences and deliver to the end customer. Boil this all down. Why are we doing headless at all? It is all about speed and agility. It is all about moving fast, iterating quickly, getting value incrementally, and, and that is what we have to solve for at the end of the day. And I think headless 2.0 gets us there even faster, but Headless 1.0 is really why we started that in the first place. Marketing teams and development team wanting to move faster, tired of being frustrated by their old CMS tools and technologies. And so that is the problem that we all need to solve. How do we help our customers go faster?